Welcome back to Sunday Square Off. It's another big story in 2018 that will carry over into the new year. How charter school owners are becoming millionaires by legally profiting off the schools in many ways that would be illegal for a public school district. Politicians like Doug Ducey are talking about reforms, but what can they really do? Joining us now, the Arizona Republic reporter who's broken story after story on this beat, Craig Harris. Welcome back. Thank you. And Craig Harris is one of those folks, just as Jessica Bamis, who show why journalism matters the, these days. Thank you so much for your great work. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, now, I want to start by underlining, we call it profiteering, but all, if not most, of what you've described is perfectly legal under Arizona law. Perfectly legal for charter schools. For charter schools. If you did it in a district school, you'd be in jail. So check off a few examples of that kind of thing. Legal for charters, illegal for public schools. Well, uh, for example, at Primavera, where the owner, Damian Kramer, paid himself $10.1 million the last two years, that could be legal in a district school, but no one would ever fly for it because no school board would ever sign off paying a superintendent $10.1 million. Eddie Farnsworth, who is a lawmaker, uh, he created another company with lobbyists to buy his schools from him, and he made close to $14 million. You have Glenn Way, who uh, basically set up no-bid contracts to build schools for the American Leadership Academy, made over $18 million in profit. You could never get away with that in a district school. It would never be allowed because of the self dealing is against the law. So all perfectly legal. Now let's go back to Primavera for a minute. You reported extensively on them and they recently got another license from the state charter school board for a new school. Right. Even though he has taken tax dollars to pay himself 10.1 million, even though his dropout rate uh, a year ago was 49 percent, the most recent year it's, it's still over 40 percent, um, they gave him another license to start a new charter school on the west side in Goodyear. Uh, and part of it is because it's legal what he's done. People may not like it, people may question it, people may think it's not ethical, but there's nothing illegal. And so the charter board was in a rock and hard place. What do you do? And so if they denied it, they'd probably get sued and they'd lose. And so that's part of the concern that even charter board members expressed at the charter board meeting. It's like, well, what do we do? I mean, the charter board has so few powers. It's almost a rubber stamp for anything that comes before it. And they act so late when something happens um, that there's really very minimal oversight and they have very few regulators. They only have 11 people who work there to regulate over 500 schools. So it's it's almost, it's an extremely challenging job. Uh, next year, Kathy Hoffman, the new Democratic school superintendent, will be on that board. Might make things a little more interesting, right. shall we say. I do want to mention Great Hearts Academy, excuse me, uh, one of the larger charter school chains. They've taken steps toward greater transparency with a new website. Ex can you explain that? Yeah, Eric Twist, who is their president and um, has also some political connections. His brother was the governor's uh, political advisor and uh, campaign, campaign manager, manager for this last election. JP Twist, right. Um, and his dad is also very influential. But what they have done is they have created a whole website about transparency, where their money goes, how much they're paying teachers, how much they're, where all their costs are, where their contracts are. And it is really a step in the right direction and it is just kind of transforming and I asked him I said well would you want the legislature to regulate this for other schools charter schools he goes no we would hope that they would follow our lead and I'm like well I'm not sure other folks will follow your lead because it is so difficult to get a lot of that information um, he is really trying to be transparent and when you look at great hearts I mean they've got a waiting list of over 11,000 kids who want to get there they are offering a product that that parents really want and they produce some of the highest test scores a lot of their kids go on to college and they really run a, a top-notch program that um, for and they also argue that they're not profiteering they're not self-dealing um, when they buy properties it stays within the nonprofit company it doesn't enrich a certain individual I want to end with 2019 and the kind of legislation that we might see uh, that might change any of this? Well, you've got Republicans kind of for the first time in several years saying we need some reforms. And so you have Kate Brophy McGee, who's kind of leading the charge in the state Senate. She's calling to, for having charters to have some, some of the same procurement laws to follow. So there's the ends of self dealing. Uh, you've got Democrats who have long called for more transparency to have them follow public records laws, open meetings law, which sounds kind of bureaucratic. But in the scheme of things, that is what 
prevents people from doing things behind closed doors. There's more transparency and openness. And even the governor and the attorney general, both Republicans, have called for a lot more openness and transparency. So we'll see what happens. The Charter Association is extremely powerful, a lot of influential people. And uh, so we'll see how much really gets done in the legislature. All right, and we'll keep watching your reporting. Craig Thank Harris, so thanks so much for joining us. Awesome, thanks. When we come back, the top stories of 2018, a year filled with historic highs and historic lows. Stay with us.